I looked at some of the world's most famous DMs and found a ton of ways to spice up D&D games. From using atmosphere and ambience to totally immerse players to changing the DM mid-game. So let's look at 10 different ways to spice up your D&D game. Starting with Oxventure's genius idea of running a one-shot where everyone has amnesia. And the character sheets are scratch cards. Luke Westley DMs this game, where his players quite literally have no idea who they're playing. The game starts off with all the characters just waking up on a beach with no memory of who they are. And whenever the players do something that would need to use information that would be on their character sheet, they scratch to reveal the hidden information, but only when needed. This means that players are constantly attempting things that they don't even know if they're good at, and also constantly learning more about their characters as the game goes on. And if doing this in a home game, you don't need to go through the effort of making a character sheet that is also a scratch card. I don't actually even know how you would go about doing that. But you can just give the players the information as and when they need it, and they can just add it to a blank character sheet. The downsides of doing something like this, it kind of needs to be a one shot, and the players need to be okay with not choosing who they play. But if your players are down, you can end up playing a game that feels truly fresh and memorable. And in fact, more one shots in general is a great tip, and we'll cover that in a bit. And next up is Travis Willingham and his DM appearance in Grog's one shot, where he pretty much runs a D&D game within a D&D game. Critical Role's players pretty much play a game of D&D in character, meaning Travis acts as Grog, his Goliath Barbarian, and DMs a game just as Grog would. And all the players do the same. They play as their characters would. It gets pretty meta, but it's a really fun idea. Think like Inception, but with D&D games. Perfect for if you want to do something fresh and original in your long-running campaign while still playing within that world with those characters. And also, you can get some weird, insane character development by watching your real-life jock friend playing a really intelligent old wizard who's actually playing a really low intelligent barbarian. Yeah, things can get weird, but it's great if you want to take a break from your main game without actually taking a break from your main game. Also, watch your passive perception. If it's above 10, you notice that the subscribe button is currently not clicked. Do with that information what you will, unless it is clicked, in which case, thank you. Onto an easy way to shake things up, looking at how Brennan Lee Mulligan plays shorter campaigns. And every new one he starts is a totally different world, style and theme. That's right, if you're worried about your D&D games getting stale, change it up completely. And if you don't want to do this if you're in the middle of a long running campaign, then just suggest to the group that you take a quick break and spend a few weeks playing a random enclosed game, which can be super thematic and stylized, before coming back to your main big game. And this really works because the majority of times when D&D games feel like they're slow and grinding to a halt and I don't know, people are getting bored. It's just because they've been playing the same campaign for so long, playing the same characters, usually maybe even in the same city. So little palette cleansers like this can really help. Okay, next up, if you want to bring some originality and freshness to your games, use Describe. And this is an ad, by the way, but it's legitimately useful. We're talking adding amazing descriptions, maps, music, ambient sounds, and general sound effects to your games with ease. And it can be streamed to a browser for online play too. Perfect for spy up your same old D&D game and making them much more immersive. Just use the link in the description and check it out. It'll make your prep time faster too, and you'll be supporting this channel. Thanks to Describe for sponsoring this video. D&D game designer Chris Perkins has a great tip on creating fresh and different games than what has come before, and that is to kind of know what has come before. To create something truly unique, you kind of need to know what they've done in past D&D modules so you know what the norm is. The more you know the most over used tropes and cliches in D&D, the better you'll be at creating unique alternatives to them or create something totally new. For example, starting a campaign not in a tavern is pretty unique, but only because we know that on average, most D&D games do start in a tavern. And obviously I don't advocate spending a ton of money on old D&D modules just to know what not to do. But the real advice here, as far as I'm concerned, is to just know D&D well. Read about it online, play the game a lot, so that it becomes far more easier to try new things and know what does and doesn't work. And I just want to interject before I get into more tips from Brennan Lee Mulligan, Matthew Mercer, and Abrea Iyengar, and say that while researching this video, 
I found something pretty interesting on Reddit. A pattern. Multiple posts from people who simply find D&D boring. D&D is brutally boring. It doesn't matter who the dungeon master is either. It doesn't matter what character you play as, D&D is not fun. It's a wonder to me that people still play this antiquated game. Players everywhere are secretly bored and wanting to do anything else except the dungeon masters who are typically ego tripping. I always wanted to play D&D and could never get a group together. Now that I am finally in a group and now that we have to play over the internet, I find it so boring. Is it the group, the game, or is it me? Everything moves so slowly. There are so many inane little rules to keep track of. One round of combat can take over 20 minutes and you might need 10 rounds to kill a big bad guy. Too often, someone will cast some spell, but then someone else busts out the rule book and hits you with a, well actually, you can't do that because. The thing is, it's not always the DM's fault, or the other players, or even the game itself. As it turns out, D&D just isn't for everyone. It's a slow game. It's about communication, discussion, problem solving, strategy. Not to say you can't run faster games of D&D, but on average, it's on the slow side. And that's by design. And this can lead to people who think they should like D&D simply not liking it because it's not their game. So if you feel like a player is just not gelling with your DM style or your game, if they seem to be getting bored easily, then don't take it personally. And definitely don't try and bend over backwards doing everything in your power to make the game more engaging and exciting for that one player. I mean, try to talk to them, try and figure out how you can make things better. A kind of communicative feedback loop is important with all players of the game. But keep in mind, it may be that you just have someone who doesn't like playing D&D. There's a good chance it is them, not you. That being said, if you do wanna try spicing up your game and make them more interesting, then on to the next point. Both Matt Mercer and Brennan Lee Mulligan do something that at least makes both their games stand out, and that is having a message. But a warning here, this is a very personal thing to you and your table, and you do really need Need to make sure everyone is on the same page. But having a bigger message throughout your campaign can help you tell a better story or give your world more oomph. And a message can be anything, just as long as you feel strongly about it. For example, one of Matt Mercer's biggest messages is inclusion, where he goes out of his way to make sure he highlights equality and openness. Obviously something he and his table feel very strongly about and something his audience seem to agree with. But in Lee Mulligan's message, it can change from campaign to campaign. But something that runs through a lot of his work is obviously anti-capitalism. Messages like this can not only make your D&D sessions stand for something more important to you, but also make them feel more yours. Your life experiences, your beliefs, and your outlook is what is shaping everything your players are experiencing and enjoying. Okay, so before I get into some critical role spoilers, and I'm warning you now it's coming up, it's only a small spoiler, you probably don't care. Let's first look at Matt Mercer's Vestiges of Divergence. Matt kept his games feeling fresh and unique by taking items and weapons and and setting up a mechanic where they level up when the characters meet certain milestones. Pretty much, a vestige of divergence is an item gifted to mortals by the gods, and each one has three states. Each state is more powerful than the last and allows the item to do more and more things, meaning as the players grow more and more powerful, so do their items. And you can take this kind of idea and stick it to anything in D&D. Items, weapons, armor, NPC assistance, mounts, airships, meaning players don't just get more attached to their items and possessions, but they'll actively go out of their way to level them up. But the vestiges themselves are not the actual point here. It's that you can take anything that came before in D&D and put any twist you want on it. But in general, a twist should be to the player's benefit. But making cool stuff cooler is a great way to spice up your game. Okay, onto the actual Critical Role spoiler. Critical Role has, a few times now, brought in guest players, or switched out the players completely. And while this is often just for the actual play audience, you can totally do this in your home games. If you have a player going on holiday for a few weeks, ask another friend who's always wanted to play to come play a temporary character. Or if you only have three or four players, maybe bring in someone new. One new face at the table can change up the whole dynamic completely, usually for the better. Critical Role even took this a step further recently, switching up DMs mid-game. I'm gonna ask you all to leave the table, please. <laughs> You don't uh, mind. To leave? Yeah. To like leave, leave. Oh. Like leave. Get out. Get off the. Get out of the table. Okay. <gasps> okay. Fine. <laughs> if you don't mind. <sighs> you know what? 
I think I'll take it from here. I think it's time to see the other half of the story. And I think this is a fascinating way to shake things up. Maybe you have a player who wants to DM, or a player who is a DM normally and wants to get back into it. If they are down, switch with them. It means they get to DM and put their mark on the world that you have created together. And at the same time, the forever DM gets to play. They'll be warned. This is not for DMs who are overly protective of their world and their narrative, for obvious reasons. Abri Iyengar uses atmosphere to spice up her games, mostly with her set dressing and props, but she's also used jumps scares in the past. Being closer. I think that's incredible. Good for you for sticking up for yourself. She didn't make you feel good about yourself and you deserve to feel good all the time. I have to go. <gasps> oh my fucking god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Do you in this? Terrifying. This is a simple one, but adding details like Abria does, just little things outside of the game in the environment, is a great way to keep your players impressed and on their toes. And a great way to keep things fresh and interesting in your D&D games is to always be learning. Check out my video about how D&D is secretly affecting your brain to see how you can use D&D as a vehicle to not just research new things, but also teach your players. And, I don't know, make everybody better or something. I don't know, it's your D&D game, you do what you want. Thank you for watching.